Hi, B family. My name is Gabela Mohale. Welcome to B Connects, a conversation series designed to come alongside you and I as we build a life of love, wellness, abundance, and impact one brick at a time. <laughs> I, I always say this, but today's guest... <laughs> Today's guest, I am so excited about. She is very special to me. She is a wife. She's a friend. She's a, I won't say soon to be mom because she's a mom already, <laughs> right? She's a mom. She's a pastor. Um, you know, she's a businesswoman. She's an actress. And the list goes on. A producer. Bona. The list goes on and on and on. Welcome, Busi. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. Um, welcome. How Thank are you doing? Thank you. I'm blessed, Denise. Sis. How are you really doing? I'm a really doing. I'm doing well. This is a good. This is a good season. I mean, every season is good, but in the sense that whatever season God allows you to be in, He's still there. Yeah. But I'm good. I'm at peace. I'm at rest. Yeah, I'm I well. see it. I you see do? it on you. I see what <laughs> low, uh, You're happy. Oh, I'm my husband kidding. has something to do with it. I <laughs> <laughs> You're looking good. Thank you. Thank you so much uh -huh. um, for honoring us today. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. I think the whole community ex is just excited to receive from you. You carry so much value, um, so much wisdom. Man, if I can if I can go into it, I remember Busi and Boipilo actually when I gave my life to the Lord in twenty babe, it was in in twenty twenty two. In twenty twelve. Okay. I'm correct, right? Yeah, in 2012, <laughs> I think my my biggest references were, were Busi and Boipilo. And I think those are the two people who were in my life that I would, you know, share with. Um, and I looked up to them a lot. So she's played a huge role in my growth. Can you, did, like, did you ever think the NSA Cabello? <laughs> The thing is, I didn't see you the way you saw yourself. Really? So, no. You didn't I, see me as I like know. the forward, ratchet little girl? No, never. Never. Really? And my sister can attest to this. We were always like, she's so classy. She's so... Really? Yes. There's just a certain way you carried yourself. And I think it's just okay. a test to the fact that when, when God has put something in you, mm. even in whatever weird stage yeah, you're going yeah. to, other people yeah. see it, even though if it hasn't fully <laughs> manifested. It was, it was a weird stage. Like, and I think a lot of people don't know. And yeah. I want to share my testimony one yeah, yeah, day. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people don't know yeah. um, that... Oh, yeah, Gabriel was in the streets. Like, <laughs> I went to my first club in grade eight, catwalk. Like, oh, I, I am telling you, like, I was quite forward. Wow. Um, but it's it's good to hear that. Yeah. You, you, yeah, I, I would never, I would never think that. So yeah. before we go into it, mm -hmm. I've got um, rapid fire questions to ask you. Okay. I know you to some, I, I, th I think I know Busi, yes. right? There's always learning to, 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 there's always growing yeah. to do in relationships, but for those who are in our community and maybe mm -hmm. some questions that I don't know about or answers yeah. that I don't know about, I want to ask, right? Okay. Um, are you, do you think you're an introvert or an extrovert? I don't know. I have this conversation with my sister a lot. And I think as I'm growing, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit of both actually. Mm. I'm actually really socially awkward and people don't believe that. Mm. I actually, I, 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 I think I can believe it. You can, yeah. yeah. So I think I've always just come out to seem like an introvert. Mm. I think because I was extremely nervous in social spaces and so mm. I overly became someone oh, okay. to accom be accommodated in the room or not make the room awkward. I just don't like awkward vibes. Mm. And so I think now that I'm growing up, I'm like, actually, I'm a little bit more to myself. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's all like I can't do it. invite you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, not obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cut on one day. La phone, I look at it. I can't even talk to it. Proverbs says we should. In the book of Proverbs, it actually says that we shouldn't over. You should not overstay your welcome. Like so, when you go visit a person's place, don't be staying like the whole yeah, day. No, it's like no, it's no not my vibe. It's, it's not my vibe. Yeah. And I think also, yeah, my my siblings, my family are starting to learn me. Like actually, Busi doesn't. She's not that much of a people, you know, into mm. the people and stuff. So I am quite to myself. Mm. I actually, really enjoy quiet moments. Moments when I'm alone. I don't like watching TV. I'm not like, I don't, I'm not much of an extrovert as much mm. as I thought growing up. So I think I'm a bit of both. But yeah, I think I'm a bit of both. Yeah. yeah. And what does your morning or night routine yeah. look like? So okay. you can choose between morning or night, depending okay. on whether you're a night person or morning person. I'm actually a night person. Really? Yeah, but now uh, I'm, I'm having to learn because being a wife, I like... 
I've given myself to serving my husband in the mornings because mm -hmm. he's the one who goes to work every okay. morning and yeah. I get to work from home. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning how to balance all of that. So I can't sleep too late so that I can wake up mm -hmm. earlier and do nice stuff for him. So my morning routine, normally um, my body wakes me up at like half past six to seven. Okay. And then I try not get out of bed until I read a scripture or mm -hmm. good morning, Holy Spirit, this is our day. That. Um, you know, teach me this, talk to me. Um, and then I try to really think about what I dreamt. Um, just that little moment of just calming myself before mm -hmm. jumping into the next thing mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's normally that. And then I do my 10-minute exercise, not every day, three times a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then then I start washing dishes and cleaning and, and, and doing the rest. And then when my husband leaves, then I do my daily devotions where mm -hmm. I read the word and get to worship and stuff. I try and do this every day. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen every day. <laughs> <laughs> I try to do it in that order every day, but it doesn't happen um, every day. I think yeah. also because uh, sometimes I'm on set, I have shoots, so it does destabilize me just a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the waking up and talking to the Holy Spirit in the morning every day, that one, I really, I really yeah. do as often as, as possible. Yeah. yeah. And I, I listened to one of your, um, or watched rather, one of your YouTube videos, and you spoke about um, doing your declarations every morning. Yes. And I think I was very inspired by that. Um, we take for granted the power of declaration. Yes, right? yes. And, man, I think it was one your first video of the year, oh, if yes. I'm not mistaken, where you yeah. spoke about <laughs> a certain experience that you kept having, or, or you had three dreams <laughs> or visions. Yes, yes. Right? And you spoke about um, how important it is to... Um, wake up and confess or, or, you know, declare the word of God. Yeah. I want us to touch on that because I think, like myself, um, I can imagine that there are few people who don't know the power of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes when you declare something or you confess something and you yeah. don't see it right away, you kind of think, oh, this, mm. it's not as important or yeah. this, this doesn't work. Yeah. So maybe touch on that um, just to help us understand as children of God, um, the power of declaring, yeah. the power of confession. And I know you love talking about this yes. topic, hence I, yeah. I believe you're the right person. So part of my devotional time was um, declaring the word or speaking the word, doing confessions. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's what we were taught, that it's actually having confessions. You confess God's word, so you say it out loudly, mm -hmm. and you personalize whatever particular scripture you found in the word pertaining to the situation you're trying to grow in or, you know, whatever the Lord has sort of said you should do in that morning yeah. and um, in that time of your life, rather. And so for me, um, the importance of the word is that, especially doing it in the morning, is like, I think I've learned in my journey of walking with God that there is spiritual significances with times of days and, you know, seasons in your life. And the morning is really important because you get to actually remember what the word of God says. It says um, everything can pass away, but the word hey, yeah, will remain. remain. And remember in John 1, 1, my favorite scriptures is like, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like the components of the word is that it can create. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you want to do in the morning is create your day, sure. right? It's sure. it set the pace. It's like, the word must go before mm. you. Jesus must go before you. You know, so whether it's Psalm 91 or Deuteronomy 28, whatever scripture, you know, you need to go before your day. It's so important. Mm. And so I think that's the weight of like speaking the word or confessing and declaring in the morning. You are sending God's word before sure, you. Sure. And so, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we are just starting, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> um, I know, I know you to be someone who really hears the voice of God. I think um, I see it because it's something that I value, uh, walking intimately with God, uh, being intentional about hearing the Lord, yeah. and not just, okay, God, um, wh what should my finances look like? What yeah. should, but day to day, like yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you mentioned when you wake up, it's good morning, Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah, You're yeah. acknowledging the presence of God. You're yeah. acknowledging the Lordship of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Um, you're acknowledging your companionship or your friendship yeah. um, with the Holy Spirit. Mm. I, I, I think many people want that, but yeah. they don't know where to start when it yeah. comes to cultivating hearing the voice of God. Yeah. A lot of the questions that I have received mm. have been, how do I know if it's my voice? How do I know mm. if it's God's voice? How do yeah. I know if it's the enemy's voice? For sure. And it's, it's quite simple for us to then say, well, God never contradicts his word, which is really true. Mm. But Practically speaking, especially for those who are tuned in, I think in the times that we're living in, it's important for us to hear the voice of God. Yeah. Um, 
how then can you educate us mm. in terms of cultivating hearing the voice of God? Sure. You know, when I was much younger, I was so I used to get so annoyed. My dad, like my dad used to talk about the Holy Spirit like it's his get to me eye. Like and I used to be like strong. Sure. Like how does he how does he hear God yeah. like that? How yeah. can he say God said? And I'm like, where? Yeah. Like how did he do that? And so I think I closely looked at some of the things that he did and later on obviously specifically God gave me things to do. Um, to make, to help me hear that voice clearer and more crystal and be able to separate, you know? And so what I could say is the first things I did was I really, you know, the way we approach God, ne? the first thing he's going to look at is the posture of our hearts. And so why do you want to hear from God? Is this beca because you need to understand that the basis of relationship is two way. So you want to hear from him because you don't just want to hear the good stuff that he wants. Sure. You want rebuke. You want relationship. You, you want, want genuine rela relationship like that, with yeah. Jesus, you yeah. know? And so I think that's the, the journey that I started off on. First, I wanted to hear because I was like, I want to test, man. <laughs> if, is he, <laughs> he going to say something to me? And so I got to a place where I, I was really desperate. So where, we used to, where, we used to, where I used to stay with my parents, there mm. was a room downstairs. So I dedicated a particular time sure. to go there and to pray. And I'd cry. I remember crying, be like, Lord... I, I've never heard you, me. Mm. I've never heard you say anything to me. And the wonderful thing was the first thing God said to me was a scripture. So he sent mm. me to his word. Okay. And so the first thing I want to say about cultivating the voice of God is not just wanting to hear a supernatural voice mm. from your belly, out of your belly will yeah. flow rivers, rivers of, of living, living water. water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you that know? song, out yeah. of my belly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first thing is God will take you to his word because yeah. he is his word. Yeah. And he knows that as you mature in sure. hearing his voice, the enemy can speak very closely to what sounds like could be God. Um, and, you know, and then that has a lot of dimension in sense of like your emotions, your thoughts, your dreams, what you watch, where you spend your time, the voices you are hearing. Sure. We can complicate that process. Sure. But if we always know to go back to the word, we refine the voice, you know. And so that's where the Lord started with me. And the first thing I remember the Lord said to me was, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your strength. And I was like, I've seen that scripture. Mm. He didn't tell me where it was. Mm. But it's like, you know, when the word of God says he will bring the word to remembrance. Yes. Yes. And I was like, Kana, okay. I know it's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So I went to look for it in Deuteronomy. And so what was he doing? He was cultivating with me a relationship with the fact that my voice starts with my word. Mm -hmm. That's where it starts. Mm -hmm. My voice starts with my word. And so then I became hungry for the word. I became hungry. I wanted to study. I wanted to understand. Why did God say this? What did he mean when he said that? And that is what helps the sensitivity of like, I believe that's what God said to me. But still, when you are unsure, he knows that he would have cultivated in you to still go back to him. Mm. You know, I think God wants that dependency in hearing him that you're not just going to hear something and say, God said God that, said, especially yeah. when you're starting off, yeah. you know. And, you know, as I matured um, in the Lord, it, it, it sometimes becomes when I know that I have been walking well mm. you know and I want to just dive into Please. living in the spirit mm -hmm. and walking in the spirit I think that people don't understand that when you if you want to hear the voice of God you have to live in the spirit sure. if you want that sure. yeah that that's that voice to be strong you live there you don't visit the spirit of God oh. like you don't visit you don't get that ring. okay let me talk about living when you live in the spirit remember living is that something has found it can habitate in there. Mm -hmm. So you have created a conducive environment sure. for Holy Spirit to live there. So it's easy to hear him. Mm. You know him. It's mm. personal to mm. you. Mm. Um, you're not just walking with him like, sure. no, you live there. So he, it, you're habitable sure. for him to be housed in. Sure. Sure. So it's easy to live and hear closely. And so, you know, as you grow, um, I guess sometimes what confuses people with, is it my mind? Is it God? Is it this? Is it God? Sometimes we need to shut out too many voices in yeah, our lives. You know, yeah. uh, sis, there's a lot of people, a lot of people speaking on YouTube and it's good. It's mm -hmm. good. The gospel of the kingdom is growing. People mm -hmm. are hearing more of the word. We need to find stillness in the way we search yeah, for absolutely. God. You can't watch Kabelo, Mpomi, Busi in mm, one day. Mm, you, you are not, you've watched five, Boma, five, seven mm. uh, sermons. <laughs> no, I, I think that's confusing. You're confusing yourself. And there's nothing wrong with what anyone is doing. It's not really about who is saying what or whatever. You know, I'm not really getting into that. 
I'm just saying we must find stillness in our yeah. pursuit with Christ. Yeah. The word must be your foundation. Sure. Your relationship with Holy Spirit must be built. Then he can lead you. Listen to that voice. Listen to that voice. Because everything else we hear, then when we hear God, we surf with all those other things. Absolutely. that you hear, Then you get confused. Sure. You don't know if it's him. You don't... You know, and yeah, and, and then I you think you have to like detox, yes, because you've listened to so many people, so and many so people. you're so confused. Exactly. Sure. And I think even as you grow in the Lord, it's not like you perfect that area, like mm -hmm. where you feel like you've arrived, mm -hmm. where you know you know it's God. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've realized as children of God, we must uh, learn how to manage our emotions because our emotions play such a big role mm -hmm. in. If you strongly desire that you want something, sometimes you can't even hear God is saying yeah. no or yes. Yeah. So wait. Sure. Don't jump into it. Just wait. I remember I wanted to go to this church. I wanted to go with all my heart. And the Lord had told me the previous week that I should go. Mm. So the day where I can actually go, I wake up and I literally, the voice of God, this was the first time I heard the voice of God audibly. Okay. And he was like, don't go. I was like, ah, <laughs> Satan umaka. And I was like, I fire. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going there. Yeah. I'm like, you will not stop me. Today is my deliverance. <laughs> I went and the church was closed that day. Hey. They didn't have the ways. <laughs> I was so you embarrassed. Are you are actually blessed that the church was just closed. Yeah. And that you didn't was, walk you in. You understand. You didn't walk in and that there was something there that was not meant, meant for, for you. Meant for me. Yeah. So you keep growing. And so you see, my emotions were more strong on what God, the rhema God had given me in the mm. previous day. But the rhema changes, mm. but the logos doesn't. Hey, come on. So your emotions mustn't confuse the sure. rhema and the logos. Yeah. yeah. What's rhema and logos for those who might so, not know? Okay, so rhema is the spoken word of mm. God. But remember, I read, um, it wasn't C. C. Lewis, no, it wasn't. It was someone else. But they said something so powerful. They're like, remember the rhema is like going to the well, right, and drawing water. Mm. But then the well is the word. Mm. So the rhema is always taken it's from always, the word. absolutely. But the rhema can change, mm. but it doesn't change the logos. Sure. Um, so, you know, sometimes we make a mistake with that. Because last week God said you must do this. Mm. Doesn't mean this week. That's why we must, must live sure, in the spirit, sure. walk in the sure. spirit. absolutely. And so, yeah. I, I, I found... Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I found that in different seasons, the Lord has required me to be so dependent yeah. that I understand that He can speak to me differently yes. in a different season. Yes, and so I, I love it when you say we need to live in the in, in, the, in the spirit, spirit yeah. right? Mm. Um, because as we mature, the one time you know, I, I I give an analogy. Yeah, Micah is young. Yeah. Yeah, we believed in not speaking to Micah like a child since he was yeah, young. But yeah. you still relate to Micah. You still speak to Micah in a way, or we do that, yeah. in a way that he will understand Absolutely. to some extent. Yeah. But as he grows, the way we speak to Micah yeah. is very different. Absolutely. And I think with our walking with God, um, as we mature, he speaks to us differently, right? Mm -hmm. And in different seasons. Yeah. For me right now... It was such a difficult time because yeah. I wanted the Lord to speak to me the way he the did way he before. Was exactly, yeah. And because yeah. he's no longer speaking to me that way, I felt very distant. Mm. You know, I felt like, God, are you, you're not speaking to me. Yeah. God, Gante, you know, what's happening? But he was requiring me to, you know, maybe go deeper with him. Seek him even you more. You are sunshipping now. You're not a my, child My anymore. point, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. There were no longer people around me who would give me prophetic words. Yeah. It's a thing of you need to come to me. Do you get <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. And so it's. I, I love what you're saying. It's very important mm. to understand that um, God as a parent and yeah. as he's perfecting us, mm. as Christ is being fully formed in us, yeah. as we mature in the Lord, yeah. he'll then begin to speak to us very differently. Sometimes it, it might be through dreams. And yes. if it's not through dreams anymore, he might say, I need you to just stay in the word and yeah. I'm going to speak to you just in the word yeah. you get what i mean sometimes he brings people around you to speak sometimes you'll have visions yeah you know um god speaks to us differently but i love how you say it's always founded yeah in always. the word oh he can never he will never be outside of his word and that's when you know you'll never be in trouble he will never contradict his word never sure. and you know it's this one thing um when you were speaking up i wanted to say please this is not pregnancy brain i rebuke you <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to say, yeah. actually, as we mature and we become sons, yeah. sometimes God doesn't speak to us in a way to, to deliberately give us instruction. He actually wants us to know the culture of the kingdom that we've built up in us and just do and just what's do. required of us. And that's the hardest part of like being grown because sometimes I'm like, oh, Baba, tell me, tell me, Father, just tell me which one. And it's, he still just doesn't say, it's like, 
inside of you, what you've developed, you know what you're supposed to do. Exactly. I don't like that stage. I don't like this yet. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and sometimes it's being governed by yeah. principle, kingdom. Exactly. So for example, exactly. you might be in church and you're sitting, God, should I give? Should I? No. Yeah. Give. It's principle. Yeah. You give. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that yeah. so much. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I want to know mm -hmm. from you, Lucy. Yeah the importance of walking intimately, not yeah. just like walking intimately with yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. I ask this because, no, I can't share it yet. I can't share the theme for Awakened this okay. year yet. <laughs> We're going to share it. We are very much going to share yeah. it. Um, but if I have to give a hint, mm. um, there is a huge need yes. for us to know the Holy Spirit yeah. in this time sure. because of what God sure. desires to do. Absolutely. In the church, yeah. but more especially with his people. Mm. Yeah, which is the church, right? Mm. Um, and so I remember just this morning I was crying. Yeah. <laughs> Let me be vulnerable a little. <laughs> I was crying and I was saying, Holy Spirit, like, I just, I, I just need to walk intimately with you again. Mm. And it's not to say that I was not walking with the Holy Spirit or hearing his voice, mm. but I don't think I was living in the spirit. Yeah. I was visiting. Yeah. And this morning I was just like, I know you're not, I know, I know you, you're not going to want to take me back to how things were, but I want to live it. Like, I want to walk intimately with mm. you, Holy Spirit. I want to walk in friendship with you. Yeah. Um, I just want to wake up and, mm. you know, have you interrupt my day? Talk Come to me. On. You know what I mean? Talk to me. Yeah. Um, share with me kingdom mysteries. Like, yeah. you know, give me a word when I'm at the mall. Hey, yeah, Joe ah. and it's yeah. different than Cape Town, but <laughs> give me a word for people when I'm, because yeah, Cape Town was different. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Cape Town was different. Like, my husband will tell you, we'd be walking on the street yeah. and I'd say, babe, I'm coming. Yes. He already knew the order. Yeah. And I could walk, <laughs> walk to the person. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, if I'm wrong, just yeah. humility. If I'm wrong, just tell me. But yeah. I really feel A, B, and C. Yeah. Or sometimes we would sit with the homeless and just yeah. minister to them. Wow. It's so different here sure. in Joburg. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's different. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. But I, I desire that again. Mm. Um, and I just think it's important for us to cultivate mm. that intimacy with Holy Spirit because it's it's the Holy Spirit that reveals Jesus to yes, us. Yes. It's the Holy Spirit that makes Jesus real to yes, us. Yes. It's the Holy Spirit who um, reminds us of the things that he's taught us. Yes. You know, like we, we cannot do this journey sure. with God outside of the person of the Holy Spirit. Cannot, 100%. You know, we cannot. And yeah. I think I love saying it because I, 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 I would hear from you the one time and I was like, oh yes, I think your mom had a prayer, um, a prayer retreat one time and you were about to pray and you said, Holy Spirit, the special one. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. now I always say Holy Spirit, my special, special one. one. You know, like he... Walking with Holy Spirit is yeah, no. so amazing, yeah. but it is so foreign to a lot of people, you know, and uh, <sighs> it's so foreign, yet yeah. it's the most important thing yeah. for the walk of a Christian, yeah. you know, in our walk as Christians. Sure. Touch on that. How, how can, give us practical steps in how mm. we can cultivate mm. intimacy with Holy Spirit. Sure. I love the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh come my on. God. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and the things when we talk about him, he, he shows, shows up, up and, yeah. you feel, and you're like, oh, you're yes. Like, <laughs> it's almost like what time? I'm like, yeah, yes. I, I <laughs> love it. it. I love it so much. I love it so much. You know, since I got married and stuff, I, mm -hmm. I, I just think a lot about my dad and the environment that I was brought up in. Mm -hmm. And my dad used to love saying, Spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, ah. hey. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, that's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Um, so, no, ah, I love Holy Ghost. Sorry. So, uh, man, anything that has to do with God and his kingdom starts with the heart. Sure. Your heart must just be genuine. Mm. What you really want from Holy Spirit. You know, I think mm. that um, different denominations maybe um, or the different things we see about Holy Spirit sometimes have marred what he's really about. Mm. Like sometimes people focus, and it's not that it's wrong, the mm. things that people have learned about him. Mm. I think they've they've emphasized sometimes on one thing and left the others mm. that are most mm. important, you know? Mm. Yes, Holy Spirit comes with power. Yes, Holy Spirit leads us. Um, the one thing I believe the Holy Spirit is there for, yes, to teach us about Jesus, that's the most important thing. He's just looking. 
for someone who wants to make room for him. For him. He yeah. really just wants you to make room for him because then he's going to teach you about Jesus. Then he's going to impart power. Then he's going to lead you. Then, he, then everything else is going to trinkle. Mm. But all he wants is a heart for someone who wants to be a friend, someone who just wants to make room for him. You really have to make room if you want that intimacy. You really have to make room because you are going to die first. Yes. Yes. Yeah. First, you're going to die. And then Trust. that one's not nice. You're not, dying. Yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Forget it. Whatever you thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's the most beautiful uh, death. Yeah. It's Ooh. the most beautiful death. Oh, my days. It's the most beautiful death because in that dying, he reveals who you really are. Mm, and that's where on. the intimacy starts. Mm. You, you know, Jesus says you have to take up your cross and you mm. have to follow him. And you have to die to yourself. You must leave yourself. Yeah. I love the scripture, Colossians 3 verse 3. It says, for we have died and our mm. true lives are hidden with God in Christ. in Christ. For that true life to be hidden, you need the Holy Ghost. Sure. And so you're going to have to die. And you know, your heart posture, if it's, Lord, whatever it takes, mm. however it looks, yeah. Spirit of the living God, I want to know you. Yeah. It starts with a desperation. Sure. You know what I realized about God as I'm growing in the mm -hmm. Lord's sister? Kure. If when I, you want to be an ordinary Christian and have an ordinary relationship and have an ordinary prayer life and have an ordinary... Oh. It's fine. It's what you're going to get. Yeah. But if you want to no. know Ooh, the mysteries on. of the kingdom... Oh. Come on now. If you want to walk with the spirit to the realm of the supernatural... Yes. yes. Oh, if on. you want to go there, sure. you must be desperate. And so it, it starts in the heart. You are just desperate for Holy Spirit. Mm. You are desperate to make room. You are desperate to die. You are desperate to let go. You are desperate to do some undoing and allow him to do the new. Sure. That's where it starts first, in your heart. You must want it for the right reasons because sure. some just want it for power. Maybe because that's what they know Holy Spirit to do, Absolutely. just to bring the gifts and the manifestation of the gifts. But it's more than that. It's more than that. He's, he's, a person. Look, he's a person mm. and he's looking for a friend. Sure. You know, sis, actually, what, sure. what God intended is that we would walk on earth emulating Jesus. Mm. He wants us to look like Jesus. Mm. He wants us to operate like Jesus. He wants us to have his character. And so sure. the spirit of the living God is the one who is going to allow that. And so when you have that knowledge of what it's really about, don't, that's, that's where you start. And then everything else about Holy Spirit will come mm. into play. But you must also be desperate. Eh? Mm. You must be desperate. The things of the spirit want sacrifice. Mm. And, and th there's nothing I can say that, that can... What can I say? You can't water that yeah, down. I can't water that down. You That's must sacrifice. Reality, you know, yeah. you must sacrifice. I mean, I remember, I love this. One of my dad's favorite stories, he would tell me about him building his relationship with the Lord and Holy Spirit was, he would wake up every day, got five. So there were too many. So he couldn't, he had no space to pray. So he'd go into his dad's car. And he said he did this for maybe a month or a week. And the one time he did it, he, he never missed the time. He dedicated, he sacrificed this sure. time. He consecrated sure. a time. I'm talking a to you. Set time. You want Holy Spirit, you must consecrate a time. Hey. Make space, make room for him. And he said he heard God audibly that day. The presence of God filled the hey. car. And he said, I know you. <laughs> to have. <woo. laughs> and he said, I know you. That's intimacy. But you see, God says, Draw to me and I will draw to yeah. you. Don't expect that if you're not seeking it, if you're not oh, pursuing it. Come on. You have to. You pursue intimacy, sis. You, yeah. you decide to be set apart. You decide to consecrate. Yeah. You decide to do different things. When people are sleeping, you wake up you to wake pray. Up. It's sacrifice. You sure. cannot expect to have this. You know when you're talking about like you used to in Cape Town minister to people. There was a time where I was so desperate for God. Mm. My life was nonsense. I didn't know. I was broke. I was broke. I was broke. All I had was God. was God. So I ran to God. Sure. And, and I might have sure. ran there for the wrong reasons at first. But you ran to him. Oh, but he knows how to break you enough oh, yeah. until the reasons are right. Oh, yes. And so, Trust. Yes. And so, you know, the Lord just began to say, it's fine. Don't, don't worry about your career. All those things. Do first what I want to. And I developed a strong relationship with the Holy Ghost. And... Mm. Like a little molong, non step. But anyway, mm. like a little rappel and hunul. I'm praying for Granny's feet in the mall yeah. and all that stuff. And you know, it's like if you want him to interrupt your life, he will. He will. And it's the most fulfilling thing. But it sure. starts with intimacy. It's not about the power first. The power will come as it, it comes. It's a byproduct. It's it's it just it you just flow in it. Yeah. But first you have to desire sure. it. You have to be 
willing to die. Yeah. And then he will impart himself on you. Yeah. And then it won't be about power Ooh. first. It'll be about humility. It'll be about character. Ooh. He'll teach you. You're saying things that are nonsense. Yeah. Stop gossiping. Stop talking yeah. about people behind their back. He's going to start with you with small things. Small things first. So, so that when you understand the power, it's not because you're operating to show it off for, for whatever. It's because it, 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 it's, it, 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 you're it's full spilling of him. over. So it's, drink, it's dripping. You sure. can't not. Sure. Because he's with you. And so intimacy is, ah, it must be about the right reasons first and the rest, the rest will come. Mm. But you must be desperate. Yeah. And you know when you're desperate, sis, I realize with God, when you're desperate, you know, I know you're saying practical ways, you start with desperation in your heart, then you initiate. Like, okay, Lord, I don't have to wait for you to tell me to meet you at five every day. I'll do I'll it. I'll do it. For 30 minutes. Sure. I'll, then one day you can feel the 30 minutes is going for it's an longer. hour. Yeah. Okay. I then love today that. you didn't just pray in tongues when you came. You started worshiping. Sure. But it was new. It was a new thing. He was there. It was worship in spirit and in truth, you know? Yeah. Then the one day he says, pray the scriptures. Sure. Walk around, walk around your neighborhood, pray the scriptures. It's the small it's things. The small things. When you keep obeying yeah. and obeying, and the intimacy grows and sure. it grows and the sure. intimacy grows. And then he says, Go, go, go ask for forgiveness from that person. Go. He's pruning you. Sure. That you cannot, this is what the Holy Spirit is telling yeah. me now. You cannot be one with the Spirit of God and stay the same. And it's stay the same. He has to change Come you on. first. And so it's in the little obeying, obeying, Come obeying. What change? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so change. That intimacy is getting stronger. Trans and transformation. Stronger. Metamorphosis, transformation. right? Exactly. Yeah. To the image of into our the Father. Image. Yeah. Into the image. Ooh, and you have to allow that to happen. Uh, you have to. You have to you want it. You cannot remain the same. You can't. And you can't expect to do the same thing every day and get the Holy Spirit. If you feel like right now you don't have a relationship or intimacy with the Holy Spirit, don't do the same thing that you oh, were doing. Sure. Try something else. Say, Father, yeah. you know what? I'm deciding I'm going to do a one-day fast. Yeah. Okay, at work, when people go... This, I used to do this at work. When people go to lunch, I'd speak I, the word. Absolutely. And be like, Lord, I'm going to the car and pray. Yeah. 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 And it's not like, oh, they go, oh, shabby, they nah. The gen... Whenever we approach God, he's actually testing what our hearts really sure. want. That's what's happening. He's really testing what our hearts really want. I was speaking to someone and he was telling me that he's now dabbling in other spiritual sure. sources. And I said, but what did you want from God? What happened? And he said, I just wanted him to bless me. Oh. And I was like, he's a lot more than that. Yeah. And so sure. I was like, what happened? He's like, I couldn't wait anymore. And I was like, your impatience wasn't that he's delaying. Mm. He was testing mm. what your heart really wants. Mm. And that's it. Even with the intimacy with Holy Spirit, if it's just power, you want power. You just want power. You want people to fall when you... Mm. <sighs> you end up tapping into different realms like and, and encountering just spirits that exactly. are not God. They will be manipulating Because the realm spirits. of darkness... Yes. Exactly. The they realm of be. darkness is very much aware that that's what you want. The world is open. Absolutely. It's not only God who can manifest his power. Sure. Satan can manifest power. Sure. Woof. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think the one thing I want to touch on two things that um, just in in prayer and coming to the Lord, I know you mm. spoke about how we need to want him. Yeah. Um, but when we come to the Lord, we need to be expectant as yes. well. I remember one time when I would just want to pray yeah. and I would just, okay, I'm going to my bedroom, I'm going to pray. And Holy Spirit started saying to me, you coming with a notepad, a pen, your Bible shows exactly. me that you are expectant that exactly. I speak to you. Yeah. You pray, you pray. When you're done praying, keep quiet. Yeah. Listen to me. Come on. Because I'll speak to you. Absolutely. Right? And um, then when it comes to prayer as well, I learned very earlier on that Holy Spirit is my first prayer partner. Yeah. And so when we come into prayer... Yeah. We don't just come into prayer just, you know, the same way as we did. And you mentioned that, the same way as we did yesterday. Mm. Sometimes it's important for us to sit in the presence of God and mm. say, Holy Spirit, you're my prayer partner. Yeah. How do you want me to pray today? Okay. And he will say, today we're praying for the nation. Today yeah, we're yeah, praying yeah. for your husband today. Because mm. he's your prayer your Absolutely. prayer partner. And so I love what you said. Sometimes um, start off by just being committed to yes. 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the thing is, he waits. He shows up. He does. Like he's so committed he to does. the commitment you set yes. for him, mm. and he shows up. Um, and you speak about five o'clock, ne? Hey, 
I've been meaning to. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> I know, like heavy. Yeah. So it's like I know that heavily. Thing. Um, but I'm I'm very much I'm convicted. Thanks for yeah. touching on specifically five o'clock because that's that's the well. specific time. Mm. Um, how has Busi changed in the last year? Sure, I've changed a lot. I think that because I left um, my spiritual home mm. and I. Nengarki street key. It's next That's how. That's how you say it. The emphasis. I was like, ah, ah, guys, I felt lost. I was like, hey, it's wild out here. I was yeah. like, oh, guys, I'm lost. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I really oh don't. My gosh. And one of the first things the Lord ministered to me was that my presence isn't locked up in your home sure. church. I'm Come wherever on. you take me. Ooh. He didn't say I'm wherever you, I'm go. Wherever you go. He said I am. I'm wherever you take Come me. On. My presence is your home. Oof. That's what he said. I was like, yo. <laughs> and I was like, wow. <laughs> I have to do some, you know, unlearning. And yeah. so. How I've really changed is I've, I think I've always had a dependency on God. And then I think I grew a reverence for the people that God has called to lead me. Mm. Um, and then I think um, my reverence, um, I didn't idolize my parents. I don't think it was at the worst, you know, at its worst. Mm -hmm. But I think I held them quite highly okay. um, that I forgot that God can take me anywhere mm -hmm. and he'll still be there. And I was so used to looking up at other people um, that the Lord was just like, well, they're not there to look up to as yeah. closely anymore. Mm. Just look up to me. Sure. And now carry that with whomever I'll bring next for you to look up sure. to. Sure, sure. Um, I must always be higher than the one you're looking up to. Mm. Um, and so that was a very good reminder. And so how I've changed is I've also come from a church, right? Mm. That was... Um, I love my mom and dad's church. I guys. love your mom oh, and dad's church gosh, too. I, I like love it. them. I love <laughs> them. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I think that um, I was exposed to too many supernatural disasters. <laughs> <laughs> In the sense that, guys, I dealt with Satanists. I dealt with occultists. Like, it was a lot. Like, I was traumatized. And so even my husband, you know, he'll be like, yeah, baby, yeah. Oh, traumatized. And I'm like, yeah, I get right. Like, you need a, <laughs> you need a spiritual <laughs> therapist, yeah. Um, you know, and so yeah. the Lord has really um, settled me mm -hmm. in, in faith and in peace. Yeah. I think I lived quite, um, I, was, I was always scared. You know, I was yeah. always scared. I was always, Kabinda, fire. Eh, like, oh, I dream. Oh, I succeed in the dream. <laughs> Marie spirits are coming for me. <laughs> I was always scared, guys. Yeah. I was always scared. And yeah. I thought at that time, I'm in my hyper supernatural time because mm. there was nothing that would happen that I didn't know that about. I get, um, I get you. But somehow I grew dependence on my knowledge of spiritual things and how mm. I could taste an environment. Mm. I can walk in and I'm able to tell her, mm. yeah. Yeah, well, nah, that's you I there. get you. Yeah, and so, but I was so dependent on all of that stuff that was developed, I quite lessened the power of God mm. in all of it. Um, and so now Ooh. I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. I love it for I you. I remember when, I think, yeah, I think um, Smith Wigglesworth said yeah. this. And he was like, I think it's him. Or was it Papa Hagen? I don't remember. Mm. And he said one day he woke up in his oh, room. Papa Hagen. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> and he said he was sitting and Satan came and sat on, yeah, you know, on his bed. On his bed. Yeah. And he's I like, remember. oh, wait, no. Yeah. And then he and went he back to sleep. Absolutely. And I was like, I was going to stand up when and say, fuck, that's you the thing. Ate. Which door was open? <laughs> Which but fox? Where did my what door was? What did I open? <laughs> yeah, what did I do? Exactly. Who did I encounter? Yeah. Like, and yeah. so now I'm like, I'm learning to be like, okay, why really was he there? Mm. But God allowed it. Allowed? Oof. I love that. God allowed it. Mm. So he has the upper hand. He's in charge of mm. my life. And you know what? God also trusts what is placed in exactly. you to allow that exactly. to happen. Exactly. And so I'm really hey. coming into that and I, I like it because even when I see my fellow spiritual panickers, I'm like, don't worry, don't worry. Shade. <laughs> don't, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, don't worry, you don't know, worry. I, I, I love that because I was, I was like... <laughs> I, I I was like you. I think yeah. just to a lesser degree, a little. Yeah. Like when I, you were high, I was just one percent below yeah. you. You can ask my husband. Like yeah. we'd be somewhere, or tr <laughs> <laughs> we'd be somewhere, and and we're driving, yeah. and I'd just say to Mukhali, "Oh, this area, yeah. I can literally pick up <laughs> this and this and this." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, I just I had this yeah. dream. Oh my yeah. god! 
you know, like Lord, I renounce. What I yeah. renounce, renounce you on? Ah, ah. I renounce. I cancel. Uh. Bona. Like, <laughs> yeah. listen, you know. And I think it's also because of the encounters that we have mm. had. You, yeah. We we can't downplay that. Yeah. yeah. I think some of the encounters. I mean. I, I can't even lie. Just when I gave my life to the Lord, the yeah. spiritual attack yeah. I experienced was real. Yeah. Um, it was no child's play. In fact, yeah. I think two days ago, I remembered the one attack in my um, yeah. raised bedroom where I was sleeping and I was having a, a very bad dream. And it was after, it was the season where I was just encountering a lot of spiritual attack. Yeah. And the bag that was sitting proper, it fell on me. I just woke up and I said, Lord, I release your fire. Mm. I release your fire. Mm. And somehow I slept. Yeah. When I woke up, literally my, um, what do you call them? Your dorm rooms, uh, people who, who stay with oh, you. Oh, yeah. Same. Your my uh, roommate. Yeah, roommate, roommate, yeah. We woke up. My whole bed was wet. I, I had not peed on myself. Jesus. But I was sweat, and I yeah. you and I knew, and I was like, spiritually, I knew. And I said, Lord, I release your fire. Yeah. I knew that that was an attack. Yeah. When that bag fell, and I knew because obviously after that, a family member then confessed, and yeah. I, you know. Yeah. But when you experience, how it, then can you not be traumatized? Uh, how then? It's <laughs> my point. It's not easy. This thing, no, you know. It's not. I mean, you no, know, it's, it's, it's not mm, easy. It's not. Yeah. It's not easy. So, so I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, I think I'm at a place where after going through the spiritual tra trauma inverted commas, but it's mm. actually quite an honor because yeah. then we tap into a very deep realm in the yeah. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that others actually long to tap into, so you know. True. And um, n after experiencing just all of that, the attack, mm -hmm. I think I was so tired yeah. that I, I, I just allowed myself to say, mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't want to oh, yeah. walk like that. I don't want to yeah. tap in too deep. I don't want yeah. to, you know. I, I then I, I sailed for too long. Mm. And now I, I realize, and I think it's important, I realize that with what God has called me to, mm. I cannot afford to just yeah, sail, sail my way. Nope. I, I can't. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not detrimental for me, but not, and not, not just for me and the people um, that, are, that are following, yeah. but also for my family. I always Absolutely. say that God has positioned me to be yeah. the watchman for my family. I would, there's nothing mm. that would happen in my family without me knowing it. Yeah. But it's so hard that now when you decided I'm going to cruise and then things Get start that. happening hey. and you're like, it's, it's like that righteous anger that how, how is it possible that this, and it's not from a place of pride. You just yes. understand what God has called you to in the yeah. position, right? Mm. And so that's just where I'm at now that, yes, it's not, a, it's not an easy journey. Mm. Um, when maybe God calls you a seer or an mm. intercessor, or, yeah. you know, it's not always going to be easy. <laughs> Uh, but but don't don't um, despise yeah. those things, Absolutely. and then just now be an autopilot yeah. because now having to labor in the spirit again, do, do you get yeah. me? Is not an easy one, and I think yeah. that's the journey I'm in, where God is calling me higher, and I and I've now accepted. Okay, this is, is who you've called me in the Absolutely. kingdom. This is who I am. Mm. I can't change it. I can't water it down. Yeah. I, you know, I I can't do that anymore. Mm. I'm actually not benefiting the kingdom itself. Yeah. Right, because it does say in the body there are many parts. Yes. Right, when mm -hmm. one is hurt or wounded, we are all wounded. Mm. If you're not taking position in the kingdom of yeah. God, you're actually um, hindering everyone else. Absolutely. Everyone is being affected yeah. in the kingdom of God. Yeah. So it's important for us to really take on the position that God has called us mm. to. And so that's kind of where I am now, where God is realigning me to take on position and take on that position fully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I think it's the same for you yeah. um, because, yes, it might not be fully similar, but I think mm. there's a lot of sim similarities Quite in our walk lot. with yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to, I don't know if that's encouraging for you or just an <laughs> oh, thank you. a word of exhortation or, uh, you know, I don't know. But it is um, I think it's very important yeah, it for us not to, we're not going to be the same. And it's yeah. not that, you know... We can't, it's in, it's in Corinthians where it says, how can the, the thumb say or think that they're more important than the toe? Absolutely. No, 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 we're, it's not like that, yeah. right? We just have different functions mm. and those functions have different requirements and we can't run away from, can't from, run away from, from those. Yeah. Um, obviously you're preggies. Yes, we will. <laughs> you know, you're preggies. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, no, uh, that walk with, with the Lord being pregnant um, was a beautiful one and how how has your journey been you know uh, being the boosty that you are sorry before you even go there i actually have a question oh sorry oh, you yes, yes. okay 
I want you to speak to the whole, um, to somebody, this whole idea of rebuking and yeah. binding. Yeah. Because I understand that there's, a, there's this idea in the church that the more you say, I rebuke, I bind, almost makes people feel like they actually are rebuking and binding. Mm -hmm. But some people rebuke and bind with no power. Yeah. So you continue to rebuke and bind, but there's no movement, there's no change, mm -hmm. there's no power. Can you like speak to bring more clarity to some to somebody and free them from this whole idea of walking in the review community? Oh shit. And and actually like bring revelation to what it is to truly rebuke and bind something that it's not just saying it, but give somebody some form of clarity and revelation mm. and free them from just always every day <laughs> binding. binding and rebuking yeah. Yeah. and also encourage those that walk in it with mm. the true understanding yeah no for sure i'm still part of the binding community i believe so much in binding because i think you know um you can't use a principle in the Bible without revelation. Yes, that's why I said understanding yeah. is so important. You, so you need to understand. So uh, binding and binding and loosing and what and, and you don't have revelation or you are not um, prompted by the Spirit of God. You know, sometimes Holy Spirit won't necessarily give you instruction. He'll prompt instruction. Yeah. And so instead of just saying, I bind you, there might be something different that you need to be um, aligned to and understand that he wants you to do to, to deal with whatever situation you're dealing with and I think what um, sometimes the binding community it's from fear we actually start walking in so much fear we don't have faith actually yeah. and and sometimes that's what happens to community or oh, well, people come from church communities that are more if have more emphasis on the supernatural and the prophetic the word of God is missing there and so people need to, well, you need to walk in the word. Mm -hmm. That sometimes situations that we are busy binding, just walking in obedience of oof, the word, yeah. walking in obedience of your relationship with God will bind things. Sure. Will, will, you understand? Obedience is a yeah. weapon in and of itself. Absolutely. Yeah. And so you don't have to constantly <laughs> bind and loose, you know. First, work, work on the fear thing. Remember faith, um, the lack of faith brings fear. Yeah. And so... Faith is built by sharing the word of God. That means uh, your, your sword is down. You are scared because your sword is down. And the word is your sword. So pick up that sword. Um, you know, so that when you walk, you know you're armed. You're not always scared. Because, you know, if someone comes here, I, I have the word. It's yeah. my armor. You yeah. know? Um, and then for the people who are doing it um, correctly, um, I can definitely affirm you in the sense that if you are uh, doing it as prompted by Holy Spirit, it's good. One thing that I have realized that um, I, I'm not fully <laughs> delivered from my trauma. God is still taking me yeah, through it. Eh? Yeah, it's a walk. <laughs> and so I think what uh, things that I've realized is when you're out of fear, it's better because then you seek understanding. Sure. And so sometimes you bind things constantly because you see them. You bind your dreams, you bind, you bind, because you just think, easy fix, toha, toha, like, mm -hmm. Satan, get away from me, I'm trying to flee. Sometimes you need to ask God, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, why do I keep dreaming yeah. sexual stuff all the mm -hmm. time? Why do I? Why is this happening? Because sometimes God is just allowing that to pull you to a deeper sure. revelation. Got you. That even when you come out, you can deliver other Others. people from it. You can share how you got out yeah. from that stuff. So be careful of quick fixes in the kingdom. You have such a long time here with, with the Lord. Try and learn. Mm -hmm. Get knowledge about why certain things are happening instead of just picking a principle and hoping it works, just yeah. throwing something like fire, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, I hope it goes away. Um, just know why it's there. Yeah. You could learn something um, that would help someone yeah. and yourself. Yeah. I like that. I remember one time I was, I used to pray a lot um, and I'm well, not used to, I still do, but um, my roommate, or mm. she, my flatmate rather, yeah. was like, I'm so inspired by your praying yeah. and I want to start doing it a lot. And I said, actually, I realized that I was praying all the time. I stuck mm. to the same time, mm. but I was not praying in faith because yeah. half the things that I was praying about, I did mm. not have the faith for. I yeah. didn't even believe God yeah. for. Yeah. So we can be very much stuck in routine, stuck in the traditions mm. of man, even mm. in the church, mm -hmm. that we do them not from a place of faith, absolutely, not from a place of understanding because it's like you said, it's mm. important to pray from a place of understanding. Mm. But also I think just to add on to what you've said mm. so brilliantly is that um, we need to, when we wage war in the kingdom of God, we fight from a place of victory. Oh, we should always pray from a place of victory. We're not praying for. How did you skip No, man. No. 
How about? Uh, I, we're not praying for victory. We're, we're praying from a place ooh, of victory. Even the so word good. tells us that he gives us the victory. Oh, come on. Right? He doesn't yeah. take it away. He doesn't lend it yeah. to us. He gives us sure. the victory. So I think that's one of the things that have helped me. Because Lena mm. Naev, what about fear? Yeah. Ha. Trauma. Hey. Hey. I mean, when bags are falling <laughs> and you wake up and everything <laughs> is just wet and you're wondering what's going on. Yeah. Of course, you're going to end up wondering mm. what is going on, you mm. know? Um, and somewhat be fearful. Yeah. Um, but... but I love Holy Spirit because then he taught me that even when you intercede for people, mm. you it's something that I think we sometimes miss where mm. we find intercessors being the most joyful, no, joyless, if there's even a word, in, intercessors not, not being joyful. Mm. And I mean, be, joy is, is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So even if you're an intercessor, you must experience and walk in and, hey. and joy. Yeah. But it's because sometimes when we intercede, we don't intercede from that place victory. of victory. That's so good. therefore, we are not full of joy. Yeah. You get what I mean? And and we, we don't pray from a place of understanding the finished work of Christ. In Absolutely. fact, we're co-laboring with the Lord. And so when he reveals something, he always reveals to redeem and to restore. Come so we on. always know that if God is going to reveal it to us, we yeah. just get to partner with him yes. in seeing the oh, victory on. manifest. Do sure. you know what I mean? Sure. So I think... That's one of the things that have helped me mm. when it comes to praying and mm. when the Lord reveals certain things that might seem like doom and gloom. It's like, no, yeah. actually, it's not doom and gloom. It's not to inflict fear because God yeah. does not inflict fear. Come on. It's actually to say, hey, I in simple, in simple terms, I want to release victory in that area and I'm going so to co-labor with you. Sure. So I... I need you to speak the that's word so of I'm victory over that, that so area. That you know what so I mean? Yeah. And so that's what I've learned and it's brought so much freedom in me because mm. now when God, happy when God revealed things, I used to be like, yo, I like ask, ask my husband. Like I used to really feel defeated <laughs> and therefore you can't even, you can't pray well when yeah. you feel defeated. Yeah. How do you defeat something yeah. when you feel defeated by it already? Mm. And so understanding that, that man, we stand, we, we, we are seated at the right hand. Aye, man. Far above in powers and principalities. In That's outstanding. Sure. We don't visit that place. Sure. That's where we are seated in Christ. Hey. So therefore, we need to learn how to then speak things, like sure. speak the word of God, pray from a place of victory. From and of victory. as sons of God, it's also understanding our inheritance yeah. in the Lord. Yeah. Do you get, victory yeah. is our inheritance yeah. in the Lord. And I yeah. think sometimes as Christians, we get very much stuck on just the cross that yeah. we don't live from the revelation of the finished work mm, of Christ. So as sure. sons, if we're really sons, we have an inheritance. Mm. What is our... Healing is our inheritance. Come on. Healing is the children's bread. Yeah. You know, it's our inheritance. And um, victory is our inheritance. The yeah. should be like, oh, smile. No, I love uh, how... I can't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you're making me smile. But it's, I think it's just important. Yeah. And, and that's the journey I'm on. Understanding, mm. Lord, if you say that we're sons and we're co-heirs with, with Christ, yeah. then we have an inheritance. Sure. And what is that inheritance? It's not an inheritance that you want us to experience when we mm. get to heaven. No, mm. you want us to walk in that inheritance here yeah. on earth, right? Sure. So I should not be afraid. By virtue, it's in Corinthians somewhere. I think we'll write it, we'll write it down. It says mm. those who are, it's one of my favorite scriptures. Mm. It says those who are joined together with the Lord have become one spirit with him. Come on. We've become one spirit with him. Mm. He who is within us is greater than he of the world. Come on. Therefore, like like Mohale was mentioning, there, there, there are certain places that you walk in. Mm. And because you are aware of the Holy Spirit and hey. you're aware of who you are, you don't even have to open your mouth. That atmosphere should shift on its own. Exactly. Because Christ, God is sure. in you. Imagine. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I was wanting to go, but I think I just wanted to add on that mm. that I think it's high time that we understand what our inheritance is sure. as children of God. Um, and if you're an intercessor, or not even just an, inter mm. an intercessor, as a child of God, sure. um, when you pray, understand that you pray from a place yes. of victory. That Therefore, so you profound. can speak and speak with authority, sure. speak with so power. Sure. Yeah, Amazing. I love that. Thank oh, you, Lord. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> What are you most proud? I, I will. I think I, I. What are you most proud of? In my life. In your life. Most proud of. Yeah. I think maybe it's what I'm most humbled by. Mm. Um, um, I stand in awe of it. I don't know. Maybe someone else would phrase it as I'm proud of it. Mm. What I'm most humbled by is just. Um, uh, just my pure desire in my heart. 
to 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 want God to sure. be honest like I think that you grow up and you encounter different people mm. and you realize people's intentions and people are revealed to you mm. and you realize that actually the heart of man is quite deep. Mm. Um, and sure. so the fact that God has given me the desire to want him and to want to love him and sure. to want to do my best, to want to live my purpose, I'm humbled by. Sure. Um, I'm really humbled by it because I think um, the spiritual <laughs> trauma thing um, is also from the fact that you've, you go through life and sometimes you encounter too many things yeah. and then you, you get disheartened. Mm. But, you know, there's never one day where I'm like, Jesus, without... No I'll stay here mm. until you reveal yourself sure. in me. And sure. I'm humbled by that. And that's something that I... That's something I stand in awe of when I look at my life because at every junction, at every season... It's the only thing I can point to to say I made it through because of. And so I'm humbled by that. And it makes me. Yeah. He's done a work in your heart. He's done a work in my heart. Sure. I think, yo, that actually, I think I want to. <laughs> that, that one, uh, yeah, it hits me hard. Mm. Because I think when they, when you feel, and I say feel, when you mm. feel as though there isn't anything to be grateful for, you can be grateful yes. that God has done a work in your heart and Absolutely. that you desire him. Absolutely. I think in my cries, a lot of the time I've said to the Lord, even when it's hard for me to believe for mm. this God, there's no way else I would go. And so even in my disbelief, I would, I'll still praise you yeah. until, you know, you do such Something, a work yeah. that I believe, you yeah. know. Um, because that's the journey with the Lord. Um, mm. You know, God loves taking walks with us. God mm. loves our process. Yeah. And we don't always have faith. Yeah. Uh, but there's nowhere else we would go. Yeah. We don't else. have an option to. It's just him. Where would we go? We're we've convicted. tasted it and seen. <laughs> we have tasted and, and we have seen. seen. Yeah, we are convicted, 100%. Sure. Is there anything that... There's one more question that I have. Yeah. As a leading woman, and I call you a leading woman because I believe that God has called you to the forefront. Amen. Um, as a leading woman, how have you found, I don't believe in balance, I believe yeah. in flow, I believe in rhythm. How have you found your rhythm? Yeah. Being a wife, being um, someone who God has called you to lead, mm. being an actress, being a, a, a businesswoman. Mm. You know, being a friend, because mm. I know that you have community and you guys mm. are very close. Mm. Um, how have you found your rhythm yeah. and still maintaining mm. or cultivating intimacy with God? Sure. Um, I think that I uh, very early on in my walk with the Lord realized I can't isolate God from my life. I can't Absolutely. isolate. Mm. He needs to be the center yes, and yes. every single thing, finance, friendship, ministry Finance. flows from, yeah. from all of that. Mm. And so I think definitely the Holy Spirit's balance doesn't look like balance. We just kind of go. <laughs> that's why I said, I <laughs> trust me. <laughs> that's why I said, I don't believe in balance. Uh, yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I'm really still learning how to be enough in every area. And actually I'm learning to understand that the way he allows me is enough. Sure. Uh, because sometimes my humanness, I, I break myself down a lot. I'm like, oh, I don't think I'm being a good enough friend. I don't think mm. I'm doing this enough. I'm not the And then I look at everything that I have to do, and I'm mm. like, Spirit of the living God, you're the one who mm. said I must do all this stuff. Mm. And so I work on his promptings. I'm not going to lie. Mm. I work on his leading. Um, and when he's not leading me, I work on good moral kingdom standard to yeah. check up on someone or to sure. to serve my husband mm. you know and when it becomes difficult i just let him lead me yeah. to be honest not that he's not leading me when it feels easier yeah um but um that's definitely how i think i found um my flow sure. with him someone yeah. said something so powerful i think it's what it was an evangelist i'm not good at names but he said um d don't if you want if if the river's flowing well don't restrict it because that's weird. It's found its path. And so with the Holy Spirit as well, find your flow with him. Don't restrict him. Like, mm. And sometimes your mind tries to come in between that. Like sometimes I'll wake up and I'm like, get low, clean, nah, get low. and then he says, pray for three hours. I'm like, three mm. hours. I'm like, it's not going to work. I have to post the video. I have to mm. this, I have to that. And he's like, I know what's more important in sure. your day. And so sometimes, yeah, there's that, you know, tug a bit with him. But when I 
when I flow, I f- you flow. You flow. Yeah. Yeah. Balance or, or rather flow with the Lord. Yeah, flow with the Sometimes Lord. looks like in this season, I need you to just pay more attention to building your family. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, I know you are a leading lady. I know that yeah. you're a businesswoman. I yeah. know that you're, I'm not saying neglect that, but I, yeah. I'm saying priority or in this season, Absolutely. give yourself wholly yeah. to building your family. And I think that's where, that's where I'm, a, I'm at. When you're yeah. speaking now, I was reminded, I was just mm-hmm. looking for that scripture. It's in Romans 8, 14 in the, mm-hmm. the Passion Translation. It yeah. actually says, the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of hey. Holy Spirit. Oh, come on. Right, we are moved, and 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 the thing is, I think I I posted this on Instagram, and mm. I said a lot of people think it's immature of us to always want to know, Holy Spirit, where do I go now? What would yeah. you like me to do? Yeah. Even to the point of saying, what do I wear yeah, today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes he's very intentional about what you should wear. Very he might have spoken to someone saying, uh, someone who's wearing a yellow dress, you're gonna meet exactly. from all of Africa. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. going to give you a word. Do you get what I mean? He's very intentional and. Some people have seen it as just being childish, but mm-hmm. it's actually in the word tells us that it shows maturity Absolutely. when we are led by the impulses yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I love, I love that. Mm. Okay. I think on my end, I want to ask you, is there anything that is on your heart that you feel we have not covered um, for someone who is, who is tuned in today? There's always a lot flowing in your heart <laughs> um, uh, when Holy Spirit alive. Being a wife is amazing. Being a wife is... A, the yeah, the transition was difficult because I was very intimately woven with my past life. <laughs> uh, um, but um, being a wife is a ministry. Literally. Absolutely. Um, and if you take it like that, it, it will flow very nice. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I haven't been doing this for very long, um, but I've realized that the same things I encountered in ministry, I'm encountering in marriage in mm-hmm. a different way, mm-hmm. um, but the principles are exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think marriage, it's God's institution. He yeah. Marriage is more about God than the people and yeah. God working in you and um, God doing something through you guys than it is really about whatever the world makes it to yeah. be about. It's so beautiful mm. and when it just becomes about God. And so I love marriage. I like it. I like it. And you're doing, uh, you're doing really well. Thank I'm you. I'm proud of you. I like I'm it. I'm really, really, <laughs> as someone who is honored to, you know, be close enough, I think mm. um, I'm really proud. <laughs> I'm, pr- I'm proud of you. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're very intentional, which is, I, I think I silently glean and learn mm. so much um, from you, which is, which is amazing. Speaking about the Holy Spirit, um, of course, God is uh, first in all our lives, individually married or whatever. So, how are you now then navigating the promptings and the voice of God and the authority of your husband? Yo, that one. It's hey, a question. No, it's a good one because I have. <laughs> it's um, a question. <laughs> I'm not passing that one. I, I'm. I'm not getting good marks. Yeah. Here. Yeah. No. I'm that's not what I'm saying. Good marks. It's a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I, that one um, is. It's. It's very difficult. I think. Um, yo. I actually think. You know what? What started helping me actually in instances where I felt so strongly, and um, but my husband's not moving in the mm. strongness that I'm feeling right now. Um, I'd really go to God so much about him. And my, I'd be very deliberate in the way I communicate with the father about him. Yeah. And then he would um, give me wisdom, even if it's not a word, but he would give me wisdom how to navigate certain things. Sure. And I think it's also about losing power sometimes mm-hmm. as a woman because you feel not power, but losing guitaring. not the right to, I guess it's like... I don't, I don't know how to control. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's also to build some level of humility because yeah. sometimes you feel so strongly and you just feel like your husband is not there. He yeah. doesn't see it the way that you see it. Yeah. And so, you know, God has really humbled me mm-hmm. in that area because most, uh, and not in a prideful way, I've developed somewhat a relationship with the Lord, really. I haven't arrived, but I, I, I know when he speaks, I know what, you know, I feel like, if he said something, why why don't you agree and we move on? Mm, why are you waiting there? Mm. You know, and so the Lord has really humbled me in that way to say, if someone is leading you, it actually doesn't necessarily mean that I'll communicate with them first. I might communicate with you, but, you but humility sure. is that you must submit to authority Absolutely. and then just bite your tongue, swallow yeah. your water yeah. until the time, you know, where God releases you. 
But what's helped me is to bring him a lot to the Lord um, in those areas where I feel like he's really not getting it or he's being a bit s- stubborn maybe um, in his ways as a man. Um, and, and just... And I'm like, Lord, I'm like, Lord, I'm like, Lord, I'm just You know, and I'm like, Lord, I'm just running. You know? And, you know, the Lord then will give me wisdom sometimes mm. because the Lord won't actually tell him, but he will teach me the humility of sure. how to approach him in sure. a manner that I'm not saying, Mara, God said. Yeah. Just say, baby, what do you think? What do you think? And then or the humility of having to wait. Yes. Because he doesn't, buy, exactly. he doesn't bypass his order. No, he doesn't so bypass his order. So even if he's spoken order. to you about something, and I, it, trust me, yeah. I am going, <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. He's speaking to you about something, and yeah. you know that you know that you know that yeah. this is the Lord. Yeah. Um, but your husband might say not now. Yeah. And even in his not now, oh no. Yeah. He might oh, say no. no. Yeah, no, yeah. And and it takes humility to just say, okay, Lord, like, you, okay. And the beauty of God, he's mm-hmm. not gonna bypass that. No. He won't. Rather he'll work in your heart to then maybe learn to approach him better Absolutely. or to pray for him to begin Absolutely. to see what God wants yeah. him to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or live, live with, with the, the no. no. Actually live with the no. Yeah. It's actually crazy. It's, it's actually really crazy. So Luna hyper spiritual. <laughs> Stop binding your husband. Stop, please. <laughs> yeah. see, what can we expect from you in the next year? Or My this baby, year? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in this year, yeah. really just submitting to um, and growing the areas in which the Lord has called me into mm. more boldly. Okay. Um, I think also part of um, having been so fearful, mm. you know, um, of like the, the attacks and the this, mm. I haven't been as consistent with what the Lord has placed in my heart to sure, do for his kingdom because sure. I pull back, I pull, uh, you know, I was so I back and forth because I'm just like, demons are here, mm. the demons are here, the <laughs> principalities are fighting me. <laughs> Yeah. And um, so I really, I have a newfound boldness to just sure. do it because he wants me to. Sure. Not because I think I'm a, I'm a better voice than yeah. whoever. No, because he wants me to. Yeah. I'm going to do it the mm-hmm. way he wants me to. And I, I, you know, I was reading a book by Mama Catherine Kuhlman. Oh. And I realized her submission to the Holy Spirit, her submission to God did not hinder the level in which she pursued discipline. Sure. And so... That's sure. why I really want to work into the ministry, pursuing the discipline of deciding to do it for God, yeah. not just waiting for the Spirit to prompt you. Yeah, um, or you feel know, good He about already it. told yeah. you to do it. Sure. Do it! Um, you know? And so, yeah, so you can expect the ministry of the Holy Spirit about marriage um, and relationship. Uh, you know, when I realized God called me for this thing, I was so bored. I'm not going to lie. What? Uh, okay. Marriage and relationship. Oh, yes. stuff. I was like, yes. I see why? it. I was I like, see why? It. This is so weird. I'm excited <laughs> about it. I see it. And so, yeah, I'll definitely be embracing that more yeah. for the benefit of the children of God. Yeah. Sure, Busi. I think, when was it? A few weeks ago or a month ago, I was just telling Mohale that, um, I don't know if you remember, babe, and I was saying, man, this year, there's something special this mm. year for Busi. Amen. I really believe that Amen. God is is about to launch you. Amen. He's about to thrust you in certain um, Amen. In spaces that sometimes might feel a bit too hefty yeah. for you. Um, but but it's God who's leading you in those spaces. Amen. And I think it's it's such a blooming time for you. Amen. We know that blooming is not... It's not as easy as we think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now we are, it's no, not we are easy. traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I'm, I'm truly, yeah. thank you so much for honoring this time. You could yeah. be anywhere. You could be anywhere. But you chose to say yes to being here. Mm. Um, and we appreciate it. I believe myself and, you know, the B family have learned so much. Thank I'm you. honored. She's my friend. Guys. She's my friend. Pray for friend. Listen, <laughs> she's my friend, right? I get to just text and we get to talk. Mm. Um, but we pray that God brings you a community <laughs> mm. or, you know, a woman or a yeah. friend or man, even if you are yeah. tuning in mm. as a man, to just be that friend. Mm. You know, I can ask Busi to pray for me mm. um, and vice versa. So I'm really, really appreciative of you. Um, I, I appreciate you being there. Even when it was like the hardest, the hardest of times, she was one of the ladies who was there um, for me and for Mohale. So I really appreciate you. Mm, Thank you so much. We are excited. Um, Where can people follow you on social media? Where can they find you? So I'm on Instagram as at Mabusi. 
and I'm on YouTube as Lucy Klaba. I have to change my surname. I haven't changed it. Am yeah. I Lucy Tarek? Klaba. I'm not sure. But if you say at Mabusi, because now YouTube has handles, okay. you can find me there mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, that's about it. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's my uh, pleasure. It was amazing. Like, <laughs> comment below. Let us know what stood out the most for you, what God, you know, spoke yeah. um, to your heart regarding or in this conversation. Mm. Um, it's been an amazing time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, having will me. S- I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I love you too. We will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.